Why would we want to parallel Infineon's cool SIC MOSFET easy modules? What is the motivation behind it? To better understand it, we can learn a lesson from the world of gymnastics. It is no surprise that the world's greatest woman's gymnast is only 4 feet 8 inches or 1.42 meters tall. Top gymnasts are typically small as they need to be fast, agile and nimble. The same applies to silicone carbide modules. This is a case where smaller is better. So, what are the key advantages of using smaller easy packages? With the same 6 milliohm internal chipset, a 62 millimeter package has 2.5 times the loop inductance and switching losses compared to an easy 2B package. It is difficult to make large high current chips with SIC due to yields. So, building a high current silicone carbide MOSFET module requires a large number of chips in parallel which makes the design and layout challenging. Using multiple pin connections, combined with a multi-layer PCB, very low inductances with physically small power loop areas can be achieved. As you can see, the easy flexible pin grid allows for low, equal and symmetrical gate inductances plus very symmetrical internal chip layouts. Additionally, modules can be spaced out on a heatsink for improved thermal spreading. Let's review a platform that was designed and built to evaluate the performance of modules operating in parallel. As you can see, the test platform has a dual PCB construction with four 6 milliohm easy to be modules connected in parallel on a main power section with a gate driver PCB mounted on top as a mezzanine. So how can we use this platform to test the paralleling performance? A double pulse test setup with an H-bridge topology is used. An H-bridge is employed so that current flows and magnetic fields match the final application. Here in this schematic, MOSFET 2 is the device under test. This also requires synchronous rectification firing pulses for MOSFET 1. Keep in mind that measuring voltages on the upper devices requires a high performance isolated differential probes. This is the actual test setup of the H-bridge and load inductor in an enclosure for safety. What are the design challenges for the gate driver circuit? It is key to turn on each gate at the same time and with the same voltage. The 6 milliohm half bridge module pinout has a dual gate source connection. These must be driven together. The symmetry is achieved by a mezzanine PCB and a tree structure with low inductance trace pairs gate source with similar lengths and inductances. The local boost stage layout for each pair of gate connections is symmetrical. Here, the trace layout is shown in more detail. With a common gate driver for all four switches, there is an alternative path for the main source current to flow via the auxiliary source connection. In the schematic, you can see this auxiliary source current shown at 10 amps in red. We affectionately term these as teenager electrons, as they seem to prefer to take a different path from everyone else. This current must be limited as it can cause gate oscillations and device failure. A couple of techniques can be used to reduce this unwanted current flow. A gate source common mode choke which presents a low impedance to the normal gate currents as the in and out currents are equal but acts as high impedance to the unwanted source currents. A local boost stage with some local decoupling capacitors and supply resistors increases impedance in the auxiliary source path without affecting the gate waveform. So, in summary, even if silicone carbide MOSFETs switch very fast, they have some characteristics that aid with paralleling compared to slower IGBTs. The transconductance is softer, so, for a small change in transconductance or in gate voltage, there is a smaller change in the main current. RDS on has a larger increase with temperature, which has a strong positive feedback effect. On the other hand, the SIC MOSFET compared to IGBTs exhibits only a small increase in switching losses with temperature. 
With IGBTs, higher switching losses equal hotter chips, which, in turn, translates into higher switching losses and a negative feedback effect. Finally, we have a helpful correlation between the distribution of RDS on and switching losses. To conclude, there is no magic to paralleling cool SIC MOSFET devices, and this enables high current solutions for applications like UPS, auxiliary inverters, or EV charging. With a good symmetrical gate driver and power layout combined with a high performance gate driver design, good static and dynamic sharing can be achieved. In addition, the very low system low inductance enables fast and low loss switching. Thank you for your attention. In the second part, we will discuss power layout and current sharing in detail. Stay tuned. Do you have any questions about this topic? Please contact your local Infineon field applications engineer. And if you need additional information on paralleling Infineon SIC MOSFET Easy modules, just have a look at our product page at infineon.com easy. And don't forget to subscribe to Infineon's newsletter for engineers. Hope you'll find it useful.